Hi, brothers and sisters. I hope you're having a great day. I love um, the, the back of the Bible. You can find rest. Now this, I want to do this in um, with the last video that I just did. Um, and this part is important because um, today's, I guess, their Labor Day. Um, and it's a day of rest where people don't work. Um, and in Christ, we labor to enter into his rest because it's hard as mankind to rest. We have organs that do work. We have, you know, systems in our body that do work. We have systems in the, in the wind that do work. We have animals who do work. We have, you know, our swords doing work. Our, our breastplate of righteousness is doing work. Our shield of faith is doing work. You know, you have to, re you know, have to have faith. And that faith you can rest in, but sometimes we're not resting in our faith. And um, that's when the flesh has overpowered the spirit, which it really can't because the spirit is stronger than the flesh. Just so you know, it says in the scriptures, the spirit, the, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is strong. So um, what has happened is the enemy has come in and twisted that truth so that you would believe the flesh has power over the spirit, which is totally true, not true. Um, the spirit has power over the flesh. And unfortunately, we have been taught to live out of our flesh, to judge by appearance, to judge by, you know, man. And that's what we were raised in. We were raised in captivity in Egypt, Sodom in Egypt. <clears throat> but God wants us to enter into his rest which his burden is light. Uh, his, he says, take, I'll, I'll, you know, take my yoke upon you. My burden is light. And so he is at rest always because he's God, but he's also working on our behalf. And he did the work on our behalf with Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. That is our Sabbath. You know, um, the seventh day Sabbath is a Saturday for the Jewish people. Um, but for us, every day is a Sabbath. We're resting in the completed work of God, um, it was his grace and mercy that did the work for the tabernacle of God and Jesus is the tabernacle of God and we are in him and the apostle said aren't you the temple of God isn't your body the temple of God so we have been restored to a good place with God through the son and we can rest in God's work because God said can you build me a temple can you build me a tabernacle I don't live in buildings made of stone so when I hear of the fact that Jesus called um, Peter the stone, he wasn't calling uh, the, 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 the rock and the stone are two different things. The rock that he built his church on was the sayings that, Jesus, that, that Peter said, which is, Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's the rock that God builds his church on, if you believe that. The stone is people who believe we become living stones in Christ. So the stone that is covering the, the new creature that's underneath, that's been resurrected with Christ, that's by the Spirit, that is um, a, a live, living. The flesh is dead for the cause of sin. And anyone who says they have no sin makes God a liar. So that's why he called us like living stones. Because we've got the separation between um, you know, we have a circumcision of, of the heart that we believe that God raised Christ from the dead. The spirit of God raised Christ from the dead. We believe that Christ said, you will tear this temple down and in three days I will, I will raise it from, I will rebuild it. So he builds the tabernacle of God. He, God builds his own temple. Um, and he, he said to the Old Testament, he said, you know, will you build me a house, you know, <laughs> no, <laughs> that I can rest in. Um, he has to build it because um, he is God. He built Adam and Eve. He built all of the stars, the sun, the moon, the celestials. He built the angels. He built the heavens and the earth. He built it all or that, you know, he built, he created us out of the earth, the dust of the earth, you know, um, to think that we can um, build something for him is, is quite arrogant and prideful and not understanding. So I would recommend everyone read the book of Job. I read it this morning and what it is is it's important because in in the scriptures the um people always look to for a king or for a man to fulfill all of their needs 
And the scriptures say that cursed is man that follows man. And when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. So in the earth, we're going to have trials and tribulations because there's sudden destruction. There's, you know, man who fells us, who says they're going to do something good, but then turns out they're just doing the same thing the last guy did. Nothing new under the sun. Whereas in Christ, we're new creatures. We are at rest in the completed work of God, building the temple. We are his tabernacle. And we're in temporary tent dwelling places, just like the temporary, uh, the, the, the animal skin, you know, of the Israel. They carried the, the they had to re, reset up the temple everywhere they went. They were in temporary tabernacles. We're in temporary tabernacles, like a, like a cup holding something valuable inside of it. And so when we enter into God's rest, we're no longer returning to dead works, which is repentance or washings to get clean or doing these works that God calls dead works. Jesus's works, God's works are living. Buddhists, Hindus, Catholicism, all of these ways of the East that came over in the spirit realm, it's all work. You know, the Buddhists, they have to do different opening of the chakras. If if you're in Catholicism, you have to do all of these things and do rosaries and whatnot in order to enter any kind of rest. In um, uh, Hinduism, there's all of these things you have to do. In every other religion, even false Christians, you know, false like Baptist, uh, Baptists, they're water Baptists. That's what they do to get saved or get cleaned. Um, they claim to be grace, but then you got to be baptized. You know, they, 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 um, th there's all of these flesh things in the charismatic church. You've got to praise and praise is good. That's where you get your strength. However, they do it in a way that it, they think that that's going to get them higher or in their tongues. They think that's going to save them. The tongues save. Um, all of these are pointing towards man's work man's work and again I, I started with our systems of this body has work to do our um, digestive system has to work our heart has to work our our lungs have to work for us to remain alive you know um, we have to have the breath of life that Jesus breathed into every man you know in the first Adam right and then it carries on from there you know the breath comes as the baby comes you know um, God gives every, lights every man that comes into the world, born into this world. This is a place of work. Work to show thyself approved, you know, dividing the word of God, you know, that's a work. Um, after we entered into rest, which is resting in the completed work of God, his grace and mercy um, for us. And, you know, God says, no man is good but God. And no, and, and no one is righteous. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. So we have to rest. We have to strive to in, labor. Today's labor. Labor to enter into God's rest. Because his burden is light. And um, this is very difficult for religious people. And I was in those religious churches too. And I remember never feeling saved. Never having comfort never feeling like I was good enough, never feeling like I was pleasing the Lord with my life because I wasn't perfect. And the problem is, is they're constantly repenting, returning to dead works, thinking that that's saving them. No, it's not. We change our mind about sin. We hate sin. Thinking a thought of lust over a woman is committing the sin of adultery. Thinking hate towards a brother or sister, you've already murdered them with your thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And he is so holy. We must have a savior, a redeemer. We must have Christ to be our perfection. His body that resurrected from the dead. The wages of sin is death. He lives. He defeated death because he was so righteous. He was Emmanuel, God with us, the word of God that became flesh. And when the seed of his word comes into us, because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, when we believe and receive that free gift of grace, it's not of work of man, but of, lest any man should boast. Let's go back to the work. It's not a work of man, lest any man should boast. 
God counts our, our faith, our belief and trust in his work as righteous. He has to count it and he has to not remember our sins anymore because he's all knowing. He's omnipresent. He can be in heaven and on earth. He can be anywhere. He is omniscient. He is the beginning, the ending, the alpha and the omega. He is uh, so many things I could go on and on. Um, he is, he has three that bear record and these three are one. See, God is so good. Who can know him? Who can know his ways? That's why when you believe in Christ as your savior, as your redeemer, and that God raised him from the dead, quickening him of the spirit and trust that he's going to do the same thing for you because you believed his report about his son, you rest you enter into that rest with God. And whenever you are, are being cleansed by the word, the word is cleansing your mind and your heart, your spirit's already saved. But a lot of my brethren are struggling and suffering. And even whenever they, the enemy attacks me when I sleep or whenever, you know, I'm out, you know, given the good news, I get mocked sometimes, you know, different things or people think that I'm crazy because I believe in the in the whole scripture all the scriptures I believe in God and I don't believe in NASA's serpent tongue lies you know they think I'm crazy because of that <laughs> um, and the truth is it's the other way around so um, knowing who I am knowing my identity I'm able to rest when I'm being persecuted in the evening when I'm being attacked or when th my mind tries to tell me you're not saved you're your um your your flesh is you know is you know, taken over you you need to repent you need to do this you need that my the old teaching from the enemy comes in and says these things and remember sin is when you don't remember who you are in Christ when the enemy can attack you it's because you don't know the authority that you have in Christ now i believe that the whole word is completed and I also believe that Jesus gave all of his people authority over the power of the enemy, which means that there's no cessation. There's, there's cessation of the word of God. It's done. He gave the last words in Revelation. And those words will never perish.